So my friends, the day has finally arrived. The Inkscape 1.4 update has just gone live today and you can go and download it right now. And in today's video, I'm going to show you the highlights. Hello my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics back with another Inkscape update video. Today I'm going to show you all of the highlights that I am particularly excited about when it comes to the 1.4 update. So without further ado, let's get started. Now as you can see on screen, there are a lot of changes that have happened within this update. The highlights that I'm going to cover in today's video are going to be the filter gallery, the extensions gallery, modular grids, swatches have had an update along with the gradient editor, unified font browsers, shape builder clipping and a completely new icon set too. So let me go with the quickest one to get out of the way first. There is a new icon set, so you can set this within the preferences, but this is how it's going to look when you install it. Very simplified, very clean. I do like it, but I'm going to stick with the default icons personally. Next is something that you will have seen me using already. You have seen me using the beta version of the 1.4 update. And within that update, it showed that we now have the filter gallery. And the filter gallery can be found by going up to the file bar, selecting filters, and then going down to filter gallery. Now, of course, I've already run through this in a previous video, but for those of you who didn't see that, when you select an object with your filter gallery open, you can now select any of these filters and see a little thumbnail of what kind of effect will happen. So let's say we took Jigsaw piece, for example. As you can see, the filter has now been applied onto my object. This is non-destructive, so you are free to undo as much as you want. And you can, of course, search by going to this bar here if there is a particular filter you want to use. Next is the extensions gallery. Yes, that's right. There is a gallery for the extensions too. I didn't see this one come in, but I am really happy that it's here. You can find this in the same way you do with the filters. Go to your extensions and then extension gallery is now available. And in the same way, it will open up all of your extensions. One of the biggest features to also be added within Inkscape 1.4 is a new grid type. Now, the new grid type can be accessed by going to your document properties. You can do this by going to file and then scrolling down to document properties. Or you can come to this toolbar on the right hand side and select this little page icon with the wrench. Once you do, you will have your document properties window pop open. Go to grids and as you will see, we now have three buttons, rectangular, axonometric and modular. Now the axonometric has been updated. We are now able to tweak the angle of the lines and get a ratio which is much, much better. So if we come here, you can see all the options and this is the default axonometric grid. But if we come to this button here, we can now add a ratio. A common ratio is two to one. You can set that and you can see the change that it's made to the grids. But there are also modular grids. Now these grids will do exactly what you can see on the screen. And then you can increase and decrease the origin to make sure that you get the size correct. But also you have a margin X and a margin Y. This will put a guideline inside the box. So let's say we want a little border around each of these boxes. We can go with say two pixels. 
and if we go on this one as well as you can see now when i zoom right in it has now put a guide border around and alternatively you can also go in the minus figures too and as you can see it's dynamically changing but if you cannot see it correctly you can always turn up the opacity and change the color of your grid lines right here next is regarding an update to the swatches and the gradient editor now as you know the swatches for your projects are at the bottom of your screen and usually you could just go over to these three lines and pick the palette that you want we now have a self-contained swatches menu that you can put into a window on the right hand side you can access this by going to view and then scrolling down to swatches give that a click and a window like this will open up now this is pretty self-explanatory you can go to this drop down and you can select whichever palette that you want and once you select any palette you will see all of the colors appear here now if we go back to inkscape default one added benefit to this as you can see is it doesn't just give you the colors but it will also give you the number two so you can get more of a precise color i think this is going to be very very helpful in the future now as for the gradient as you can see i have got my fill and stroke menu opened up here you can open up your fill and stroke menu by double clicking the swatches in the bottom left or by simply coming to this arrow and then going to fill and stroke when you have an object selected and you go to put on a gradient it will react however you would normally use it however there is now a new option for the orientation now we can come up to this slider and we can move and get the angle perfect you will still have to tweak the length yourself so if you want this to be a lot shorter for example and be more near the center you can do so but you will have to change the length yourself next is the unified font browser now this is something else that i have mentioned in previous videos because it is really really helpful to me normally when you do some text and then you open up your text editor by going to the right hand side and selecting the t you will get your font browser open this is your text editor and as you can see right now i've got a unified font browser this means that every single font that i have installed will come in order of their styles so normally you would select the font on the left hand side and then select the style for example bold italic super bold underlined that kind of thing you will have all of them on the right hand side however the unified font browser will give you a list underneath that you can scroll down through and of course by selecting one of them it will automatically change on the left hand side then you can use the arrow keys or you can simply scroll using the mouse wheel to select the font that you want now the last and most interesting part for me is the new feature from the shape builder normally if you wanted to cut out part of a rasterified image like this a pixel based image as you can see in the bottom then you would have to normally draw a shape around the part that you want to select then right click and go down to the bottom of the menu where you would see mask so even if i was using the pen tool and i selected an area around the car i could easily use this shape select the picture behind it and then right click set clip and that would clip out the shape that i want 
However, say you want multiple shapes cut out from the same picture. Say we wanted to have just the window and then part of the scenery. Just like this. These are just two random circles that I've done, not being exact in any way. And now I've selected them both and the picture. Now we can go to our shape builder tool on the left hand side and as you can see we now have the picture as part of the shape builder project. So with this icon selected which is add we are going to select the circles and then we're going to come up to finish and now we have our cutout pieces but these are no longer joined together either we can now move them independently of each other and this is also non-destructive they're clones so you can right click and release clip at any time and still get your shapes back so that's it my friend them are the highlights that i wanted to go over for the new 1.4 update i am really happy with everything that they have added and of course i will leave a link to what you can see on screen right now which is all the new features and patch notes and all the bug fixes that the inkscape developers have done an amazing job fixing I take my hat off to the devs, you've done an amazing job and I for one am very happy with the result. Did you know that you can become a member of the Button Press Graphics YouTube channel? Well, now you do. You will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel enabling me to make much better content in the future. Also, you can send in your artwork into the creative corner. This is a regular section where I will showcase your work in a future video. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and I will see you next time.